Hello everyone, my name is Behnaz Majasin from the Institute for Technological Development and Innovation in Communications in the Universidad de Las Palmas de Gran Canaria. And now I am also with Lightbee. In this session, I'm going to present to you my article titled Underwater Optical Camera Communication Buttons on a Multispectral Camera and Spectral Variations of the LED Emission. The authors who are contributing in this work are Julio Rufo, Daniel Moreno, Victor Guerra, Jose Rabadan, and Rafael Perez. Here you can see the contents that I will discuss. First, I'll give a brief view overview of optical camera communications and talk about the objective and, uh, of this presentation. Then I'll uh, talk about the different effects of the temperature and the spectral features of the LEDs. After that, I will uh, talk about the underwater light attenuation dependence on uh, wavelengths such as scattering and absorption. Next, I'll show you the methodology uh, that we followed. Uh, in the following, we will see the obtained results and finally we discuss some conclusion that we have drawn. Well, optical camera communications applications have widely risen in the last few years, mainly because the vast majority of the smart devices of our daily life, such as laptops, tablets, or smartphones, which are equipped with a camera. For this reason, in the literature, we, we can find many studies that use different types of cameras like uh, single lens reflex cameras or smartphones as the receiver in OCC. However, we pro propose in this work in the use of a camera with a high spectral resolution such as multispectral camera in an OCC system. Well, the main difference between that kind of camera and the conventional ones is that the image sensor of the latter only captures RGB images like the human eye. On the contrary, the multispectral cameras provide a higher number of bands, much more numerous than the three RGB bands of the conventional cameras. In this way, optical multispectral camera communications open up a range of uh, opportunities. On the other hand, the wavelength of an LED is related to the energy gap of the semiconductor substrate, which is affected by PN junction temperature. The energy gap is usually modeled using equation 1. Also, the wavelength and the energy gap are related to each other by equation 2. In general, the energy gap decreases as the temperature grows. So, as wavelength is inversely proportional to energy gap, the peak wavelength of the LED increases with temperature. Apart from the peak wavelength, the spectral width and the luminous efficiency are affected by temperature too. Therefore, in this work, we intend to benefit from the spectral changes of the LED caused when, it, uh, te when its temperature increases, uh, in the sense that uh, the wavelength variation could be captured by a multispectral camera. Now I am going to talk about the underwater effects which are dependent on wavelengths. Light signal in underwater suffers from severe absorption and scattering. Absorption is an energy transfer process in which photons lost their energy and convert it into other forms such as uh, heat. A scattering results from the interaction of light with the molecules and atoms uh, of the transmission medium. As shown in equation 1, in underwater light transmission, the overall attenuation effects of absorption and scattering can be described by the extinction coefficient C lambda at a wavelength. The main thing which is important for us is the depending of these two effects on the wavelength. As you can see in figure 1, the attenuation coefficient which is shown by QAT grows as the wavelength increases. Therefore, each light beam based on its wavelength experience attenuation. In order to achieve this objective, first we have characterized the LEDs under test and checked how the temperature affects their spectrum. This characterization was carried out by following this scheme. As you can see, the LEDs were driven uh, using currents ranging from 10 to 130 milliampers to induce them different junction temperatures. Then we have used a thermographic camera to measure the maximum temperature of the LED. These graphs show the obtained results of the characterization. The measures were taken for five minutes to stabilize the temperature and it depicts an exponential growth that is higher as the driving current increases. 
Here you can see that the maximum temperature is reached after about 2 minutes. Furthermore, for these results, we can see we can also extract that uh, the highest temperature was obtained on the blue LED, followed by the green and the red LEDs. Additionally, we have been used a spectrometer and light meter to obtain the wavelength information of the LEDs. In this graph, we are seeing the spectral radiant power and also the effect of the light induced temperature on the LED emission. From this, we can see three effects as temperature increased. Firstly, the peak wavelength shifted, then the FWHM increased, and finally, the efficiency diminished. In addition, focusing on the peak wavelength, the most significant shift was obtained in the red LED uh, with a difference about uh, 21 nanometers with respect to the minimum and the maximum temperature. In this slide, you can see the multi-spectral camera filter band. As you can see, there are nine bands where one of them is panchromatic channel, which is a, a sum of all channels. Part of the energy captured in one band is also captured in, in the near band so that uh, as the emitted wavelength shifted, there was a more energy contribution in the closed bands. Turning our attention to the use of a multispectral camera in OCC, we have used this scheme to capture the wavelength variation in the LEDs. As I said before, a conventional camera couldn't detect the slight spectral changes due to the due to temperature, so we employed a nine bands multispectral camera that covers the wavelength range from 400 to 1000 nanometers. Additionally, before capturing the information with the camera, the light beam of the LED passed through an integrating a sphere, uh, concentrating it on a narrow point. Then the light went through a water tank that can easily simulate an underwater channel. In this work, we use a clear tap water only. After uh, collecting the image, we selected the region that uh, contained the emitted light and extracted the spectral signatures at several temperatures for each LED. Finally, we evaluated the results. In this slide, we observed the spectral signatures. The spectral variations uh, mentioned before was, uh, were grabbed by the multispectral camera and this effect uh, is appreciated in the spectral response. For example, let's look at the case, the blue LED, the graph on the right side. It shows four signatures at different temperatures. Here we can see the uh, at, le, at the two lowest temperature, the solid line and the dashed line. The bands that uh, had more information were band 1 and band 2. However, as temperature rose, band 3 got more level. And this is because, uh, as we saw before, the peak wavelength of the LED redshifted. And the multispectral camera has enough spectral resolution to detect that variation. The same effects are observable in the red and the green signatures. To conclude, we saw that the spectral features of the LEDs are affected by temperature. This is an effect that is usually considered harmful. However, we propose to take advantage of this using a multispectral camera that can detect those spectral variations. On the other hand, underwater channel effects such as scattering and absorption are dependent on wavelengths. As a result, each light beam experiences attenuation at its wavelength. Moreover, because the spectral signatures at different temperatures can be discriminated each other by this type of camera, it's possible to have separable communication channels using a unique transmitter for an OMCC application. This way, for instance, a wavelength division multiplexing application could be performed. Well, all things considered, with this work, we intend to get further measurements in OCC system in the future based on multispectral cameras. Uh, thank, you. Uh, thank you for your attention and I'll be glad to answer questions you might have.